Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Finally coming up for air. <laughs> Had our Independence Day celebration uh, yesterday. And uh, as I said uh, in, a, in a short video, I hope all my friends in Great Britain had a good day at work. Uh, we, we celebrated uh, Independence Day yesterday and uh, had a good time. It was a much needed break after working this past weekend. So I told you it was a big weekend and it was. Um, so Saturday started out, that was the planning session. That's where we all sit down and okay, here's the, the script we're gonna follow basically. Uh, with Extreme and our contractor, Burwood. Um, by the way, shout out to Burwood. If you guys ever need any uh, professional services, reach out to Burwood. They are awesome. They're really good. Uh, especially my man, Ryan Johnson. Ask for Ryan if you're ever doing Palo Alto firewall, firewall work. He's, he's awesome. Um, so anyway, we get all together on Saturday. We go through the script. Uh, my boss, Aman, I'm on Preet, call her I'm on. Uh, pokes all the holes in it that she can find, and uh, they help. They she helps them get it all cleaned up, and she's really good at thinking things through, and that's that's what she did. So we found a bunch of stuff that uh, needed to be addressed, and uh, did that in the script. So then we came back on Sunday, Sunday morning, and got started. And in a nutshell, all the stuff we thought would be hard was easy. And the stuff we thought would be easy gave us the biggest headaches of all. So what went down? So the first thing we were going to do, let me grab this sheet here and kind of explain what we got going on here. So this is how our, our V wire was set up. We're going to move uh, layer three from a VLAN that was living over here on our, our core switch environment. What we basically wanted to do is move it over here to the uh, Palo Alto firewalls. So we did that. Um, and to do that required some cabling because you can look at this cabling diagram and you can see that's that's kind of complicated. Um, we've got our four core switches. We've got two WAN switches, which is like the edge of our network. That's where the internet comes in. And then we've got these two copper, copper uh, switches and that's, that's where the V-wire was basically implemented. So what we would do is if we wanted to get to our partner Cerner out here, um, we would basically go to our Cerner transit network over here in our core uh, network, and it would route us over to the Cerner uh, ASAs, their routers. To get there, you know, we just thought it was a, a straight hop. I mean, from from the packets perspective, it was just a wire. And the way it worked is it would, <laughs> the traffic would come down here into the switch. It would go egress tagged out on one port, VLAN 40, well, this VLAN right there, 4022. That was our Cerner, v, Cerner Transit VLAN. It would come out there. It would go through the firewall and then egress back out untagged on a different VLAN. And we mixed the tagging and untagging because you couldn't tag all these all on the same port. It just it just wouldn't work. So that was a way of a way for us to just make this port think it was connected to this port. I know that's complicated. Trust me it works. Night jockey, I know you're out there. Help me explain. <laughs> so this is the V wire. This is the way it worked. So a mixture of tagging and untagging on these, which took three three ports of a switch to implement a wire, basically. Well, what ended up happening once we did our, once we moved the layer three uh, VLAN IP from over here to the firewall, yoik, this is what we end up with. Much, much simplified. We've gotten rid of that copper switch. Basically, when we want to go out to um, Cerner, it says, okay, I don't have a route for Cerner. So I'm just gonna send you to our edge firewalls here. So they come over here to the edge firewalls and says, oh yeah, I know where Cerner is. It's at this IP address. And then it would route it back out to this guy. So we went from three copper connections down to one, right into our WAN switches. 
And <clears throat> excuse me, basically all that was involved was taking that Cerner Transit VLAN that we were using before and tagging it on the, this is a LACP uplink to the two firewalls. Um, it's basically LACP, is a, it's a span, it's across these two guys. SMLT in the uh, extreme world. So uh, a multi-link trunk spanned across these two switches that go into here. And uh, so the Cerner traffic would come in here and go right back out and then out to the firewalls. So bottom line, we got rid of a bunch of cabling and, and got it down to one, one cable. And uh, so that was good. That's the part we thought wouldn't go too well. The part that, and it went well. The part that didn't go well that we thought would go really easy. Well, let me pull this one back out. Is this a good one to do? Uh, or is this a better one to do? This is a better one over here. So the second part of our work was to trim down VRRP, uh, virtu uh, virtual routing, I don't remember what it stands for. It's a virtual routing protocol anyway, it's early. Um, basically, you'll, you'll put a, a virtual IP that, that'll live on any of these four switches. Um, they each got their own IP address, you set up VRRP, it's a virtual IP address, and the client will connect it one of these four switches for its default gateway, basically. Um, so our plan was to make this simpler, we're gonna take VRRP off of these two switches, core switches two and four, and just leave everything on core switches one and three. So it should have been as easily as easy as just removing VRRP off of these two switches, which is exactly what we did. Then the calls started coming in. So um, apparently, there's a command VRRP backup master enable, and I I'm sorry I'm not I I don't get into the weeds that much. We were relying on our vendor for that, but basically it's 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 an ARP cache issue. Let me just boil it down to that. It's an ARP cache issue because I'm not even quite sure how to explain it to you. So what was happening? What we were seeing is that. In any given user VLAN, some of their PCs would work and we could ping them and some of them wouldn't for no reason. So it's smacked of an ARP cache issue. So our um, extreme network resource that was here on site um, started doing some digging and he found out there's some sort of hitch with the VRRP backup master enable command is that you have to remove that, remove the backup master capability before you remove VRRP from a switch. So what he basically did is put the VRRP config back in, remove that backup master enable command. And I'm sorry, I should have done more research to tell you exactly what it does and how, but I, I, I didn't. Sorry, I'm tired <laughs> and I'm a little lazy. Um, so he put all the VRRP commands in removed that backup master, and then he was able to delete the layer threes and there was no problem. So somewhere, the ARP, there was an ARP cache issue somewhere in all of that core switching network. Um, so we were doing it piecemeal as the calls came in and they kept coming in. And my poor boss, Amon, was on call that night and she was up half the night doing that fix. Um, so, Finally, the next morning, she'd had enough, and she, she told him, hey, come up with a script that's going to do every single one of the VLANs in every VRF and, uh, you know, remove that Mac VRRP backup master enable. Um, so she got tired of waiting for him, so she did it, and she ran it on everything. Um, the only one we didn't run it on was our wireless network because everything was working, so we elected to just leave everything alone until this mor this very morning, which would be Wednesday, last Wednesday for you guys, um, I went in there and I, I ran it across all the wire wired wireless submits. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was fun. And another hitch we ran into is uh, we have a, a wireless application called Vocera which connects to these little badges that you, we hang, we wear around our neck or whatever, and you press a button and you can say, call 
Jane Doe. And it'll say, calling Jane Doe. And then it'll connect you and you two can just talk over the badge. Um, Vocera stopped being able to authenticate for the network. We use Mac-based authentication for Vocera. It wasn't able to authenticate. So I had to turn that, when we turned that off, then it was all magically working. So we thought, well, maybe that's another one of those ARP cache issues. Um, so what I what I did is this morning, like I said, ran the uh, wireless fix, and then uh, re-enabled Mac-based authentication for Vocera, and it still wasn't working. So what actually authenticates them is we have something called a NAC. It used to be called a NAC. I don't know what Extreme calls it now. It's a network admission control server. And uh, it would basically, it's like a radius server, basically. Um, it was doing all the authentication. And one of the ways that us, one of the criteria that it uses to authenticate Vocera badges is it evaluates which switch it comes in on. And in our, for wireless, the switch is going to be the wireless controller itself. Well, for some reason, unknown to us, because we didn't, we didn't change anything on the NAC, um, the new wireless controllers disappeared from that rule, that particular rule, in the that policy in the uh, in the NAC. So uh, that's I just discovered that this morning, and I looked at that. Huh, that's weird. So I added them back in, and boom! Now Vocera is authenticating normally again. So just weird, weird stuff happened Sunday. Um, but uh, yeah, now we're, we're in a much better place now. We're, it's a simpler uh, thing to manage. The other, th oh, one more thing we did, which uh, here I'll show you in this, this diagram here. Before we had layer three VLAN IP addresses the, the IP address of any given VLAN could be in one of the four core switches. It could be in one of the two WAN switches. It could be on one of the two firewalls. Where? Could have been anywhere. So one thing we, we did is we collapsed everything down to it'll either be in one it'll either be in one of these two core switches here, one in the data center, one in the MDF, or it will be on the firewall. That's it. So if it's internal routing, um, it's going to live here. And if we don't know how to get to it in here, it's just going to send it to the default gateway, which is the firewall. And it's got the routes for everything else for, you know, County WAN or uh, Cerner or any of the other things we go to. So it used to be that we had static routes for Cerner on each one of these switches and on this switch, and on this switch. So if we had to add a route for Cerner, we had to add it in six different places. Here, 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 and here. So uh, yeah, we've cleaned that up a lot. So all those static routes for Cerner are gone from here. They're gone from here. It just says, hey, I don't know how to get there. Go to the firewall, and the firewall says, oh, that's Cerner. You go out that way. So it's, it's simplified our, our routing a lot. And the biggie, the big, big biggie, is before we're, I made a video on it, firewall failover fail. You can go back and look for that. Uh, firewall failover success. Um, since we got rid of the V-wire and we're getting rid of the whatever ARP caching problem we were having with the V-wire, since it's all layer three now, um, we immediately tried to fail over. We didn't lose any any connections to Cerner. I mean, it dropped one ping. What's well, one ping? And when we failed it back, it dropped one ping, which is exciting for many reasons. The biggest of which is if we lose this data center, if we lose this, lose this rack, this whole room, um, our end users can still get to Cerner. They can still get out there, still update patient records, still do everything they need to do. Um, same thing, if we lose the basement, got floods or something, um, we can still get to Cerner through, through this, this batch of stuff here. So um, that's great. The other good thing that makes me happy personally is now I can update the firewalls software without fear or worry um, because I can, you know, update the secondary, fail over, 
And if everything works, then I go back and update the primary, and we're all in good shape again. And uh, of course, the, the segmentation firewalls, that was they were always fine. They always worked, so. Yeah, pretty happy. Um, so yeah, I gotta I gotta remove some cables here today. Um, where are you? Where are you? Where are ya? There we go. So this this guy down here, this is our edge firewall. These four cables here, these get to come out. They're gone. They're not even used. Um, they are replaced by. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? This single cable right here. That one cable. And it comes down here to the Cerner. Where are you? Oh, right there. I'm pointing right at it. Cerner firewall right here, right here. So, yeah, pretty, pretty happy about that. And, yeah, I think that's about all we've got. Um, I know people were asking for a tour of the data center. I'll, I'll do that in a different video. Because um, I still got some... Uh, Sorry about the focus there. Oh, there you are. Um, I still got some a lot of cleanup work and documentation to do on, on how things look now. Got to remove some cables. So I will definitely get to that uh, uh, firewall or data center tour. And uh, another thing I'll talk about is uh, it might be interesting to you guys is how our segmentation firewall works, how that whole workflow is. Um, so, yeah, we got some pretty good stuff coming up. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll call it right there. I think I've talked enough, don't you? Um, so, as always, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button. Click the notification bell if you want. And um, thanks for the great comments. You guys got some great suggestions, especially on the fiber flapping videos. Been some great suggestions there. Um, keep them coming because I am, I am not the smartest guy out here, you know. People have been asking me, well, can you mentor me? No, I, you should really find somebody better. Um, yeah, I, I'm not the best mentor. So, but I do love God. <laughs> and I love his son, Jesus. So uh, I got that going for me. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Keep the great comments coming. Keep, keep the prayer requests coming. Happy to pray for you. Happy to pray for all my brothers and sisters out there. And... Uh, that's it. We'll catch y'all next time. God bless.